my name's June Webb and I'm the founder of Norfolk Clubhouse, um, which is a, a new charitable incorporated organisation um, based in Norfolk, uh, set up in 2019 to support people uh, adult age, sort of 18 to 100 and whatever age uh, with uh, mental health issues that may be sort of lifelong and we provide a, a lifelong membership model for them um, and really for them to help us to run it. It's, it's a bottom-up uh, organisation and it's based on the international clubhouse model which has about 320 to 330 clubhouses sort of globally but you can find out a bit more about it if you're interesting at the end I've, I've given a few sort of references so today I'm here to just sort of give a few um, few of my perhaps personal thoughts on building resilience I'm not an expert but um, I have some lived experience and some professional experience so I'm uh, just sort of sharing those with you today and, and thank you for the opportunity so here we go building resilience so um what we'll explore. Um, so what is resilience? I've got a sort of definition uh, that I think is, is quite a human one. Um, we'll look at something called psychological flexibility, which is a bit of a mouthful, but um, it's looking at how we can be more resilient, really, in a nutshell. Um, I've introduced resilience as an ecosystem, and I'll talk a bit more about that. That might seem a bit, what on earth is that about? Um, and the issue of sort of context, because it, that does make a difference, really, as you'll probably have known yourself in your own experience about sometimes when you are perhaps not as resilient as you may have been in the past. So that's quite important. And then at the end, just some resources. Again, they're very personal to me that I have found help me to sort of make sense of things. Uh, but I'm hoping that some of those might help you too so it's very personal really. Um, so just a resilience, um, Carol Pemberton who's a, a sort of expert on resilience, uh, she's a, a coach as well, um, she says the capacity to remain flexible in our thoughts, feelings and behaviours when faced by a life disruption or extended periods of pressure so that we emerge from difficulty stronger wiser and more able. So her emphasis again is this flexibility and I think what's important as well she's saying to emerge from that it sounds like a process to me rather than something that we have you know that you know we've got sort of half a pound of resilience here and three pounds of resilience there. Um, it, it's a process so hopefully the end result is to be wiser and stronger and and more capable of you know being resilient in the future and handling difficulties um, and I think that's sort of in contrast that I've, I've seen you know the ones that are in physical sciences and that's very apt you know some you know you've heard people talk about a spring or a, a piece of elastic which somehow returns back to its normal shape um, you know and obviously for a spring and a piece of elastic that might be okay but you know we are human beings so um, I mean my my view is that we don't really go back ever to being the same in mm -hmm. some way we are changed so I think for me that's kind of an important point maybe to make but you know uh, that's just my view. Um, so be, be, we can go on to this and I, I put sort of no that's fine yeah, yeah. please yeah we can thank you sorry. That's all right. um, um, yeah, I, I, put psych I put psychological flexibility and I thought, well, you know, we are bodies as well and, and our bodies are very much involved in the whole of us and how we interact with the world. So then I put physical as well um, and I'll sort of come back to that. But I thought before I talk about, you know, how we can be more resilient and what helps, I thought, well, maybe it would help just to quickly, you know, look at what keeps us stuck, you know. Um, the book, you know, Carol Pemberton's book about flexibility and, and, and resilience was written prior to the COVID outbreak. So, I mean, you know, I think it's important that, you know, we look at that as well. But um, but I think some of these things are relevant to now uh, because we, 
we bring these forward. So, you know, what keeps us stuck? Um, so maybe if we're attached or, or fused to maybe a set of beliefs about ourselves um, or about others, um, and that may be difficult for us if we feel that they define us. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, people don't experience depression because, you know, that's something we do experience. And uh, certainly since COVID um, outbreak, a lot of people have lost their jobs. So, you know, that's totally understandable. That's a fact. People's, you know, people have lost their jobs. But they've, you know, become redundant or their job has become redundant. Mm -hmm. um, and people have sometimes, you know, people I work with, they say I'm a people pleaser, you know, so. I don't know how to sort of stick up for myself. Um, and it might be also sometimes people feel that, you know, I mean, Donald Trump at the moment, you know, he's, I don't want to sort of pick on him, but, you know, um, he sees himself in a certain way and that may or may not be something that we appreciate, but for him, you know, something's happened there and he needs to sort of adjust to that. That's a difference there. So the only thing is, I say, you know, we all define ourselves in a certain way it makes up our identity and, and that's fine. But I suppose what I'm looking at is what might keep us stuck in that uh, we may think, well, you know, I'll never get a job. So that kind of, if we're kind of fused with that, that gets in the way of us moving forward. That's, that's kind of all I'm saying with that. And the other things are maybe experiential avoidance, which is kind of a way of, uh, yeah, I mean, I am unemployed maybe, but I, I've you know, applied for loads of jobs. I don't get anywhere. Um, I'm not gonna do that anymore because I, I really don't, can't handle the anxiety around that. Or, you know, maybe somebody's relationship has broken up and that's anxiety provoking and stressful. And I'm not sure I wanna put myself out there anymore. Um, you know, these thoughts that we have. Um, because again, don't want to be disappointed. So that's another thing maybe that kind of keeps us stuck um, and that doesn't help us moving forward. And again, all these things are normal and natural to feel. They're not, I'm not judging them. Um, I'm just sort of highlighting them as maybe things that stop us from moving on. Um, I think that's a really important point that you've just made actually, mm. is that like you can acknowledge the things that are holding you back without judging them. Yes. You know, as long as you're saying okay that's fine to feel that but how do we move past it that's mm. the the difference I guess isn't it it is and I think you're right Jordan because I think you know working with a young person the other day I mean she was saying you know the people around her her family saying well why don't you just pull yourself together why aren't you over that now and mm -hmm. you know a family are well-meaning they're trying to help um but we have a lot of blame and shame around the way we feel and I think that's another thing, you know, in, in these webinars, I'm sure that, you know, I haven't been able to attend all of them, but, you know, this blame and shame, this social media um, telling us how we should feel, act and think. Um, and if we're not doing that, then there's something wrong with us. So I'm just highlighting that, you know, that these things, these feelings are there um, and they're normal. Mm. <laughs> um, but it's just being able to acknowledge them and say, well, yeah, they're keeping me stuck and how can I move forward really? Yeah. Um, there are just another couple of things around that, that sort of unworkable action in the long term. Um, bring, sorry, <laughs> bringing that in, you know, the things that, you know, we might feel stressed or anxious. Um, and again, not judging this behaviour at all or, or, you know, saying it's right or wrong, uh, but we all have coping mechanisms. So, to help us cope with things, maybe we'll, we'll have a, an extra glass of wine or, you know, we'll go to the doctor and, and ask for some, you know, maybe some things to help us, help us sleep. That's all fine. You know, I'm not judging that. Um, but certain things that are become unworkable, maybe if we feel that we're, we're getting onto a slippery slope where the behaviour isn't helping us anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we may be using substances to numb the pain and maybe increasing that, you know, that um, rather than trying to sort of look at that and what's that about. So, again, these things, you know, can keep us afloat, but they're not helping us to kind of swim or move forward. Mm -hmm. um, 
And lastly, the, the sort of limiting assumptions that we maybe make about ourselves and others, again, that, um, you know, somebody was saying, you know, um, I'm too old to change now, or um, maybe Fred will never get a job, you know, he's never going to make anything of himself. So we kind of hear these things, and I'm, I'm sure people are trying to help, but sometimes maybe saying these things don't help and we kind of internalise them even though we don't know um and the kind of stories that you know are the stories that we tell ourselves and maybe you know uh share with others are they really helping so they're kind of just things that keep us stuck so i thought it might be useful just to kind of run through those that are quite common and certainly you know now that we're in the covid um sort of pandemic uh, some of these things are still around for us <clears throat> So kind of going on to, um, yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, they say strategy, but um, some of these things are quite important, I think. So we hear a lot about purpose. Um, and I think that, I don't know if, you know, people have heard of Simon Sinek. He's, he's a kind of expert on finding your why. Um, and this morning I just had a look on... Um, on sort of LinkedIn and he has quite a lot of sort of things about that at the moment I think some of which are kind of pay what you can so I think he's running some uh, webinars on purpose and not only sort of finding your why but um, how to live your why so there's things around there maybe that you know people if they're interested can tap into but it's important about you know why are we doing this? Why are we here? Uh, what matters to us? And um, and the other thing I think that isn't on the other slide is values. I mean, linking our purpose and our why to, you know, really what does matter to us? What, you know, what gets us out of bed in the morning? What, what values do we have? You know, um, uh, and linking those to our values because our values can always be something that helped to anchor us in times of difficulty um, even if we're not able to change things so we can always come back to those values if we define them um, and they can you know I can imagine you know what it's like in a storm we can drop anchor and that keeps us kind of grounded I'm sort of mixing the metaphors here but that's sort of there um, for us um, and the other, the other things, again, it, it's not really a list. It's a, it's a cycle, really. We can go around these again. Um, deepening our co connectivity to others and to things that matter to us. So, um, you know, our lives are short. We only have so much time. Um, you know, what relationships um, do we need to sort of prioritise and deepen? Um, and what do we need to let go of? You know, I think through all this the covid and everything really that's going on um a lot of us have kind of you know maybe thinking about that you know what do we really want to prioritize in our lives and um and what's not kind of working you know for us do we is it worth you know is it worth that not that you know other people aren't worth that but um you know just to sort of make sure that we're using our time um in a helpful way you know um practicing positivity um more than kind of saying well you know let's let's pretend and look on the bright side it's sort of more about what we're grateful for um what really you know can we thank those people around us for their you know their things that they you know give to us and being generous um and appreciating the people around us and the things that we really value um mm -hmm being compassionate to ourselves and to others. Um, so in a way, it's not pretending that everything's fine when it's not, um, but, but just sort of being, you know, grateful uh, and compassionate. And no doubt, you know, many people have sort of looked at that before in other, in other webinars, but it's important really. Yeah. Um, and then we come on to sort of managing emotions. Um, I think it's important just to acknowledge that they're there, you know, not to push them away, um, that it is difficult. Um, 
and listening to to what scares us what what does make us scared and um you know i think they can teach us things really um that are maybe asking some questions of ourselves you know what is the worst that can happen what are our worst fears um and what can we change um are there things within our power that we can change or not um and if we can't change them um this sort of concept of acceptance not that we agree with it or you know it's not like sort of um we're resigning ourselves to things but acceptance is more well you know i'm acknowledging this it's not easy um but then coming back to our values as an anchor i can still live my values so i am living my values even though i can't change x y and z at the moment so you know if you're in a job maybe that a lot of us are working from home or a lot of us you know are on the front line still i'm i'm thinking about you know the front line workers that you know really putting their lives at risk so that we can you know be okay so um wh- wherever we are um you know what's going on for us there mm. um what are our fears um and some of them are, are you know scary and we some of us have actually lost lost relationships we've lost loved ones and we need to acknowledge you know what's happened to us over the last you know seven or eight months really um so the moderating the stress um i guess i'm focusing on our roles here a bit you know what are our roles at work um and at home you know they may be very different you know we might be feeling that we're we're working at you know we're going to work or we're working from home and we're we're managing we're being productive um some people feel that this has been a great opportunity for them um that they've been able to review you know what's happened before i mean there are some law firms that i've heard of that have gone completely online you know mm. um they're saving money they're not spending money on um managing offices and things like that so um and they're actually more productive and they're keeping that um but obviously not everyone's in that position so um again what are our values about this are we living our values um um there's just a a little story about you know a hypothetical story about somebody called George maybe who was a you know a chief executive officer and um as a child he was sort of responsible for the family his dad had died and he'd grown up being very responsible and hard working so as a child he he sort of stayed back at school one day and asked the other children to maybe get tea ready so that he could come home a bit later so he stayed at at school and then as he sort of rounded the corner to go home there was a fire engine outside the house and they kind of you know set fire to the kitchen um thankfully nobody's hurt but for him um that stuck with him and then it took that forward into his work he was very successful but he was a workaholic and he was unable to maybe delegate to others and mm-hmm. felt responsible for everything until he kind of had a a bit of a breakdown and felt that you know this isn't working for me anymore it's just a sort of hypothetical you know i mean it it was somebody but it this is kind of where we go isn't it what do we bring forward from maybe our childhood um the way we think we should be um the roles that we occupy so again going back to that fusion of you know um you know i i have to take responsibility for everything and that's not working so for for george you know that's sort of an example of you know what are we actually doing here um at home you know uh, as well as at work so um in respect of that i'll i'll just flag up a little bit of um in the resources there is a a book by somebody called Nancy Klein called Time to Think it is on the the resources and um she's really great in that she's a, an entrepreneur and she's brought in a, a way of helping organizations and individuals to really think about 
you know how we can think better and to be be more resilient so um i think that's for me as well i i came across that when i was training to be a coach and you know i, I think it's a, a really great resource for everybody but again that's very subjective that's my my take on it so um the reframing the thinking, um, yeah, is um, I'll just briefly go over that um, if we're OK for time. Yeah, yeah, um, fine, don't worry. That's OK. Um, yeah. Is there any other way of looking at things? So, I mean, Nancy Klein is a great resource for doing that, um, because if we can't think uh, because we're stressed and anxious, um, we're not going to be able to go forward very well with that one. <laughs> um, so what are our limiting assumptions? What are we assuming about ourselves and others? What do we need to let go of? Um, and these may be established skills and, and things that we know, you know, maybe we need to learn new things. And I'm sure people over the last, you know, eight to nine months have done a lot of that. You know, um, some companies have completely gone online. Some people have taken courses. So, you know, people are doing this already. It's not sort of rocket science, but, um, and also mourning maybe the, the loss that we may feel, you know, of, of the things that we're not able to do anymore or the person that we think we are or, you know, and the real losses, maybe friendships and, uh, and, and friends, you know. Um, so, you know, what are the new things that we can learn, can learn and, you know, what opportunities can we see within all this? And a lot of that, no doubt, the people that are here um, have been doing anyway. Mm. So um, that's kind of it for that. Um, I'll just briefly go on to sort of resilience as an ecosystem. I've just put a, a nice picture up there of a, of, a, of a sort of a marine ecosystem. And I've just gone slightly blank. If you can, if it's, um, I forgot what they are now, those things. It's just completely blank, but I'm looking at them. I can't think of the name of them, but it's a uh, coral, um, coral reef. That's it. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah um, a, reef. <laughs> a reef, yeah, coral reef. And, you know, I heard a few weeks ago that even, you know, the temperature of the water makes such a difference. If it just goes up by a few degrees, it can drastically affect that coral reef. Um, so the reason I'm introducing that really as a system is that, you know, we do live in systems, you know, we're individuals, but we, we live within families. We live within organisations and, you know, uh, we are a system, really, and we all affect each other. So uh, resilience, in a way, is the view of, well, what do we have? What are our strengths? But what are the strengths and the supports around us? So if we kind of, you know, do a little ecogram maybe of ourselves and then around that another circle, you know, our family and friends, there's a support network there. Mm -hmm. And around that, if we have children, you know, our children go to school, maybe they've gone to university, you know, there's the NHS, that's a huge resource that helps to support us. So what's there, what's in the wider community and politically and economically? So some things will support us and some things may be a little bit like the, the water increasing a little bit there that they're not helping us what is kind of needs to change so I suppose sometimes it might be useful just to put that down as part of you know what ecosystem where am I in the ecosystem here um, and also looking at maybe the economy there's been an awful lot here of you know looking at that again and can we reimagine you know, our system, our capitalist system, I'm not going to be political here, but but a lot of people are thinking about, can we do things better? We've got the, you know, the ecosystem anyway, you know, um, David Attenborough, everything, you know, Greta Thunberg, we, we're all very aware of our planet. So to really zoom out there, you know, are the things that we can do um, as individuals, as companies, as businesses, um social enterprises and i think we are trying to look at that you know what is our impact on our planet mm -hmm. that is also impacting on us isn't it so um kind of zooming in and zooming out so just lastly um i'll bring in the context if that's okay um so you know 
looking at George, you know, as a little case study, um, I think they're all sort of cats at the moment, a bit like a babushka thing, and they're all sort of cats. But, you know, maybe George, when he was a little boy, you know, he was there in that context. He had to be the breadwinner. Um, he took on responsibility for the family and then he transferred that to his company. He's very successful, but very hardworking. Um, but is that now helping him now that he's a CEO? So, you know, that context for him matters really um, in how successful he is in being as resilient as he was when he was a young, young boy. He was, you know, um, a rescuer, maybe. I don't want to put a label on him, but he really helped the family to survive. But in his current context of being CEO of this company, how is that impacting on him and the workplace? So, again, you know, um, we can all really live a full, rich and meaningful life. Um, but again, what are we kind of bringing forward that isn't working for us, that's just keeping us afloat? Um, I mean, for a personal, you know, for me, um, I, I was kind of a bit like George. I, I sort of looked after the family. Um, but then when my mum was very ill and dying, um, even though I knew that was something, you know, I was her carer, I kind of really couldn't cope because it, she was too close to me. And, um, you know, I, I just felt I wasn't coping very well because even though um, she had an illness that we knew that was terminal and I was her carer, um, I kind of knew that with my head, but my heart was somewhere else, you know, and I wasn't coping very well. And I didn't get a lot of support either. So um, I felt very alone with that. So again, the context, you know, is really important for us, doesn't it? So I, I guess, what I'm trying to say is don't beat yourself up if you think, well, I was coping before and I'm not coping now because let's face it, you know, this pandemic is not something that any of us have lived through before, is it? And it's huge. Um, yeah, so definitely. kind of, yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, that's kind of it really, you know, what is driving us? I mean, for George, it was fear. Um, it was fear, you know, and um, and if it's fear for us, yeah, let's acknowledge it's scary, isn't it? And uh, and just to see how we can maybe look at that and help us to swim, not just sort of, you know, um, maybe doing the doggy paddle and that sort of thing, just struggling in the water at the moment. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm getting, you know, never feel guilty. And that's right, you know, it's not about blaming and shaming because... And I, and I don't, I don't feel guilty, but I, you know, I did at the time, but I think that's it, isn't it? It's part of being resilient, looking at that. And uh, I thought I'd just bring that in because it's an example, you know, it's, it's, mm. it's our lived experience. So, so that's it folks, really, if you've got any questions or just want to discuss that, that's, uh, yes, there's some resources here. Um, I've put can, Margaret, yeah, sorry. Well, mm. I was just gonna say, I can share, if anybody would like these. So when I send out on mm. Monday, the recording details, um, I, I'll share the presentation if you're happy for me to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's for, really. Yeah, thank you. But uh, yeah, please look at them. Uh, again, it's very, you know, it, the people that I've found that give me strength, they've got the Norfolk Chamber of Commerce there because they provide an enormous lot, enormous lot of support for people uh, and businesses. Um, yeah. There are some other things on there um, as well. Um, and if you're interested in looking at, you know, political issues and looking at the welfare state, uh, Hilary Cottam is a social entrepreneur and she's looked at resilience from the bottom up for communities. It's just, I don't know, obviously, people's interests, but there's hopefully something there for everyone. Um, thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. And, and, uh, and, that's just, and that's just us. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's, it's a wonderful presentation. Um, Thank you. Yeah, because um, I myself is actually uh, finally a mental health nursing student. Oh, right, so, great. Yeah, mm. so, so, so mm. one of the projects actually I'm doing is um, is something similar related to the resilience mm. uh, is on the topic of um, emotional intelligence. Yes, well, it is, isn't yeah, it? You're right, so yes. I think yeah. especially using mm. the emotional intelligence, I mean, you can 
uh, resolve a lot of the conflict and you can become mm. a lot of stronger person as well so so i'm actually in the process of uh, creating a presentation for for in a two mm. week time so oh, I, great. I, I, oh. i find your presentation mm. is quite interesting and uh, and it is quite touching as well the experiences you had and especially the empathy and mm. uh, and also i mean it's very difficult to talk as well uh, mm. because mm. um um i had a different career for many years and then having lost after a very long time then i have to change my career mm. so i'm actually mm. really training to become a mental health nurse I mean, yes I absolutely so i've struggled in my life as well mm. Mm. it, it mm. is painful but um, i mean yes i mean um, it takes a lot of courage to uh do something because uh mm. because because you have done in your life many things for a long time it becomes second nature to you mm, and all mm. of a sudden that has been taken away then uh, mm. you, you kind of um uh, you're not young anymore so me you still you trying to change your career because you have a commitment you have mm, a mm, bills mm. to pay and you know you have a child to look after and things like mm. that so, so yeah the kind of, yeah, 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 I, yeah actually yeah. but i sense relate to what you were saying so i, mm. I think you're doing a, mm. a good work and then i really entirely enjoyed listening to the presentation thank you and i'm glad to share it i mean it's just all about you know i mean it is very subjective of course that's what you know it's a personal view as well but you know just to share with people what what i found really helpful but the emotional intelligence again is is very very allied to this isn't it it's yeah, about yeah yeah, yeah. yeah about it is it's a, even i find it very interesting especially mm. working in um mm. healthcare sector mm. because mm. i've been I, i never stopped working even through the uh, covid pandemic and mm. uh, still work uh, i work in a nursing home so we have some oh, wow. office, yeah uh, mm. with the uh, nursing home mm. and also mm. i work within the placement with the nhs as well so i mean mm. it's challenging mm. Uh, mm. but I mean, you know sometimes in life you go through and uh, you grow through as well not just going absolutely through, absolutely going as well yeah i mean and so. also i mean is one of the things i found is um working in nhs i think is um you have people from different background culture mm. and uh, you have um, personalities uh, you know uh, you know it can be very challenging and draining so, you know mm. sometimes i do think at times that uh, you know everybody is capable of doing the job i think it's just uh, dealing with the other human being is the, the most <laughs> difficult thing yeah absolutely uh, yeah i mean yeah. don't we all i mean we're yeah. we're all we 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 just get it wrong i mean we we yeah. take it for granted that communication mm. is quite easy but it's not mm. but it <laughs> yeah. is not I mean, it is not because sometimes you say something in with the good intentions the person interpreting it probably yes. uh, maybe slightly interpreting that they may be probably a kind of very um, um they may have some stress issues or family issues but they can sort mm. of in that time I mean they can interpret differently and then he can become a heated argument and the conflict and so on and so forth so i mean yeah i mean it's a kind of very interesting topic see i mean i'll i love mm. to have your presentation slides and then probably oh, yes. have some yeah. resources at the end yes so, i think jordan sending yeah, yeah i mean yeah i mean uh, yeah yeah brilliant thank you so yeah. much no you're you welcome thank you and, and yeah and, uh, keep in touch if you want i mean yeah, i, I yeah, that's definitely. another thing i mean i'd love to you know get a group together maybe in yeah. a new year just to, i mean i know we've only got so much time but but this mm. is the other thing i was saying about an ecosystem is that i know a lot of people are doing this on mm. linkedin and and various places and uh, obviously we 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 can't spread ourselves too thinly but you know again that's the prioritization and and really you know can we can i be a resource to you you know mm-hmm. and and my organization this is what i'm saying you know this is the kind of platform that is that a question you know that you know ca- how can we be a resource a resource of resilience to others you know yeah. and I, um, i think i suppose i mean uh, in, in real world i think it is a kind of win win situation i mean that you can help us or and we can help you in some way mm. Mm. and spread the news i mean i think that's the great thing to do so mm. yeah, um, yeah even a little thing you know yeah absolutely i mean and you're working mental health and i mean i used to be a social worker and i, I still work in mental health in other ways i'm a psychotherapist mm. and coach but i set the clubhouse up because i felt that there was a lot of gaps 
and that this is a, a membership model for life that is it works it works globally it works in all cultures it works in all countries you know where they're there and um and it, it's it puts the person in charge it's and I'm, I'm not you know don't want to sort of uh, take up time here for that but mm-hmm. you know if you're interested have a look at this there's, there's you know, have a look at our website. I would and, definitely, uh, yeah. If you, you know, again, but I know you're busy and you've got other things to do, but... Um, no, 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 no. Um, I'm kind of open-minded. Mm. I always like to mm. take a look at things and, mm. you know, le- learning from things because, you know, I mean, you know, time to time you still think, oh, okay, you know, I know enough, but, you know, you'll be surprised when you meet with strangers and you start talking about it and you, 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 you probably know that you pretty much know very little on that topic. Uh, well and, and yeah can, we can always learn yeah you we? can always yeah. learn from mm. each other so. and that, that's the resilience thing isn't it and the emotional yes. intelligence and yes. and i mean a part of the ecosystem as well is that you know we it, i was looking into a circular economy i know i don't want to keep going on about you know the capitalist system but we can look at different things and look at different ways of doing things and and my view is that actually we have all we need we have an abundance of everything it's just you know the circular circular economy Mm. say we don't really have waste what what can we use here let's just recycle it all and re re you know and this is the same with us you know i don't see anybody as being written off you know uh, in that we all have strengths we all have things we can do it's not what we can't do it's what we can do and that's what the clubhouse is about you know mm. uh, there's a role for everybody there's a place to belong everybody can belong somewhere and be part of it you know mm. um and diversity as you were saying yeah. is a strength it's not a it is, you know it is, absolutely it 